good morning guys from Palawan in the Philippines and welcome you guys to my channel welcome to Philippines again it's the second time in the year you must be wondering why am I here for the second time I don't know I just felt like coming to this uh, beautiful island and exploring the southernmost uh, part of the Philippines which is again still a part of Luzon if you've seen my previous videos Philippines is divided into Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao but this time I just chose to come to Palawan chill do some videos and let's see uh, how this trip goes so it's my first day and we are here at uh, Palawan this is a place where they have uh, crocodiles like they uh, take care of crocodiles they it's a farm crocodile farm so let's explore that just took a couple of photos with the crocodiles I'll put it on the screen and yeah it's a hot day so let's start the tour of this crocodile farm to see is right when you enter you can you get to see this uh, skin skin of the crocodile and here there's a skeleton it's huge huh? it's massive look at the head and some uh, descriptions you have fresh water and you have indo-pacific salt water let's wait for the guide this is going to be a guided tour so we're just uh, waiting for the guide okay some eggs which was found to be infertile anyway let's wait for the uh, guide and let's do this Hold the crocodile for 60 pesos only that's unlimited shots using your cell phones and camera lens it's safe because the mouth is really deep it cannot find you anymore you will get the chance to hold the crocodile like this thing so maliit na po ay ay nabubuhatin so before we go there i just want to introduce to you i welcome to palawan wildlife rescue and conservation center so this is formerly known as crocodile farming institute established in 1987 so we are the first crocodile farm here in the philippines and by the way my name is Alvin. i will join you from here down to the hatching house and up to the pens of the big crocodiles so before we proceed i just want to introduce to you so this is our real skeleton and skin of crocodile his name is rio rio he's a real soft water crocodile captured on august 4 1990 in rio tuba river Pataraza, that's in the southern part of palawan so rio has a length of 17.6 or five meters and he was captured because he attacked and killed the fisherman it must confirm that he swallowed the right leg of the victim mm -hmm. so only the right leg because crocodiles even though this big they cannot swallow a big prey or the whole body of human they can only consume one to two percent of their body mass so they don't eat too much they have a slow metabolism mm -hmm. so don't worry because they're still <laughs> After five months in captivity, he died because of stress related to his transport. Alam ko po, you still remember Lolong the crocodile. Yes. Lolong is also a male, so the crocodile like Rio, captured in September 2011 in Agusan del Sur in Mindanao. So not here in Palawan, Lolong was never here in Palawan. Lolong has a length of 20.3 feet, 6 meters, 1 meter longer than Rio. Mm -hmm. That's why he was recognized by the Guinness Book of World Record as the world's largest saltwater crocodile in captivity. Unfortunately, Lolo also died in February 2013. His skeleton is now in this video National Museum in Manila. And everyone, as for the skin of Rio, it has no commercial value anymore, so this can no longer be used for making crocodile products like leather bag, shoes, belt, or wallet. Because Rio, he was estimated 60 years old when he died, so this is too hard and very dry for the machine to process. The one that they use for making those products are made from the younger salt water crocodile, which is about three to four years old only. The Sisig Tapalichon Burger Barbecue and Crocodile Ice Cream. Hindi po sa akin. Ice Cream po, ay doon lang po sa Davao. Our next station po. Okay, mas maganda as 
pinipilit ako yung uh, itlog ko ng buhay ako. Kumpara ko sa itlog ko ng manok. Yung egyok ko ginagawa mga... So, bakit ba sa Palawan pinadala? Philippine crocodile and saltwater crocodile here in the Philippines, they lay eggs once a year lang po at summertime, March, April, and May, and the eggs will hatch after 90 days, 3 months, or rainy season here in the Philippines. The Philippine crocodile can lay 30 to 40 eggs, saltwater crocodile 40 to 80. Quite a lot, marami po, but not all, all of the eggs will hatch in their natural habitat. Why? Because sometimes they have predators or some of the eggs are infertile or nabubugok. So here with crocodile farm, we have the breeding area at the back. So once they lay eggs, we collect all of the eggs and transfer all of their eggs here in our incubation area. So we incubate all of the eggs for us to reach the 80 to 90 percent of the batch of the eggs with hatch. And did you know that we can manipulate their gender? Pwede po gawin lalaki, we can do it male and female. It depends on the temperature po. For the Philippine crocodile, that's 30 to 32 degrees Celsius possible female, 33 male. Saltwater crocodile, 30 to 31 degrees Celsius female, 32 male, 33 female. 40 degrees Celsius and up, that's too hot, that's already hard boiled egg. <laughs> so here at Crocodile Farm, we have 1,000 plus crocodiles, but you will only see more or less 200. Pero pinakamalaki po natin, the biggest one is 17 feet, mamaya po sa ating view and area, buhay na buhay. We conserve, we breed, if there's a chance, we will release them in their natural habitat. Hindi po kung saan-saan po ha sa mga designated sanctuaries lang, and we only release 2 to 5 years old para matuto pa po sila, they can still learn how to hunt their own food. So why we release? Because crocodiles, they have important role in balancing our ecosystem. And if you want to have your own crocodile farm, business po ng crocodile CC, crocodile meat and prod uh, products and mga skin. Um, this is the only place where you can buy your breeder stocks of saltwater crocodile. Not to be killed, but to be butchered. Instead, it will serve as your breeder stocks. Inahin sa kabara ko lang po. Once they mate, nag-breed, nag ng eggs, lumaki, yun po yung pwedeng katayin for skin and for meat. So, we have sustainable population of saltwater crocodiles. Okay? Hands off, turn off the flash effect camera. So, they are nocturnal animals. Most active at night, but it doesn't mean that they are sleeping right now. Let's begin the elimination round. <laughs> so we are just entering the uh, the hatching. Look how small they are. There's one here. So these are the freshwater crocodile or Philippine. Be careful with your things, cell phones, wallets, bags, not to fall inside the pen of our big crocodile because I don't want to get it back to you. They are bigger than me. Maybe I'll just tell you a So, yeah, they preserve the different types of crocodile found in Philippines. So, they have fresh water and salt water. So yeah, that was the hatchling house where they have uh, eggs, crocodile lays eggs. So you heard the different types. Okay, so this is a crocodile and this is his name. Okay. 
Okay, so let's get back. His name is Aklan, you can see it. It's salt water, 16 feet, approximately 70 years old. So, he is big, but I feel bad. He's just in a small... He's big, but his house is very small. It is what it is, what to do. But it's huge, absolutely huge. There's one here. So this one attacked a fisherman. That's why he's captured. So his name is Mar. Again, salt water, 14 feet, 35 to 40 years. So here there's one more. His name is Mark Mark, 12 feet and 70 to 80 years old. He's sleeping here. This guy has a big house. And look at him. His his name is Kalayan. Again, it's 15 feet, 60 to 70 years old. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it from the crocodile farm. So now let's go to next stop which is a World War II museum. So something that you must see when you're here in Palawan. So yeah, I'll take you guys there. So yeah, just made it to the second spot, which is the World War II museum. It's, this one is right next to the beach, so let's enter. So there's, when you enter you have this monument in honor of the Palawan fighting. Thousand guerrillas sacrifice their own life. So here you have, I love World War II veterans. And when you enter you have these uh, jeeps. fighter jets just uh, just flew by so yeah as you enter you can see these uh, jeeps so this was used during Vietnamese war some uh, aircraft gun oh this was a world war two survivor one more here South Korean War so yeah let's uh, go inside so yeah it's a museum where you have all these uh, uh, war memorials you guys know from my previous video that Philippines was in a war with uh, Spaniards, with the US in the Manila uh, video. I'll put it on top so you can see it. Okay, let's see what's the story of Palawan. So, <coughs> a story of thousand men who in the darkest hour were threatened, went to the mountains to fight for you. So amazing the world our, our world is you know a lot of stories which very few of us which we know are very few of so all the uniforms flags helmets it's very hot There's some guns, that's all on display. There's no guide or someone here to actually explain, but uh, you just have to read it and explore on your own. So, 
so it's look at this there's a separate room for United States atomic bomb look how massive these uh, bombs were and Japanese room some more pictures here of the jets Yeah, I think that's uh, that's it in this museum. You have just some display, some old uh, like equipments, guns. And next, I went to this small little carinderia. Now, what is a carinderia? Well, for me, it's a place with lots of good stuffs. But by definition, it means it's a small stall in the Philippines by the side of the road or in the middle of the markets with a whole new confidence. Well, they are also known as Turo Turo, which means point point, where they serve delicious, I mean literally delicious, affordable Filipino dishes which anybody from any walks of life can eat. The low cost of the meals here is the reason why it is so popular in the Philippines. And me, being someone who will risk it everything to try anything, I literally chose almost all the dishes there from the pork adobo which is commonly known as the national dish of the Philippines, pork sausage, octopus and off cuts of pork. And it was my first time to try the spicy pork with coconut milk. Well, I love them all for just being so delicious. I will definitely recommend to you guys if you are in the Philippines, please do visit any of the Carinderia for you to know what Filipino cuisine is and to help the locals. And lastly, to end this video, I went to the most visited place in the Puerto Princesa city, the Baywalk. Now, what's a Baywalk? Well, for me, it's a place right next to the sea with lots of stalls of souvenirs, bakeries and a place where you see the locals come together as one, spend time with their loved ones. But I was there for my favorite thing, the burl fight or in Tagalog as they say Kamayan where people eat with their hands straight from the table. Well little did I know that this was a tradition of the armed forces of the Philippines and the intent was to build brotherhood among the persons regardless of their ranks. Wow, what a beautiful tradition in a beautiful world. Trying all the dishes on the table which tasted nothing but sweet. I wish it could have been tasted better if everything was not as sweet as it was. But yet they were fresh and delicious. I say again, do not ever miss the boodle fights in any part of the Philippines when you're around. And that's the end of the video from Palawan. I hope you guys enjoyed it watching as much as I did experiencing it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching until then take care and much love to you all.